Okay, this video was inspired by a thread on the custom form of blade forms. It was a thread in which I spoke about the late great Phil Hartsfield's blades, specifically his Quakens. In that thread, um, a lot of people came out and paid homage, which I thought was just awesome that Phil was getting the, the well-deserved respect that a, a maker of his stature and, and status in the knife community should receive. I was just blown away by just the general good feeling that the whole thread had, a lot of positive stuff. There's a lot of makers these days making adaptations of the modern Japanese Quaken. A few of those makers on the forum, which are just great guys, jumped in and did some, did some blades that were inspired by Phil. Um, adaptations of the Phil Hartsfield Quaken. Three of those makers, all the makers that did it on the forum did a great job, and I wish everybody would have sent them to me to play with, but three of the makers did send me blades to take a look at. Those three makers were Matt Gregory, Ben Tendink, and Adam Vigil. These three guys do Japanese style pieces. They have their own style of Quaken that is superb, but they also were kind enough to, to, to give this a go and really put out some old school looking Phil Hartsfield type pieces with their own flair. Um, the first one we'll speak about is from Ben. Ben Tendink is just a fantastic maker. He is doing some wild Japanese creations. He's truly setting himself apart because his blades look like they're his, which I always say in the world of custom knives, if you can be able to tell someone's blade by just a glance when there's been a million knives made by a million different makers, you really are kind of setting your, your own niche. And Ben's work is distinctive Ben. It, it looks awesome. Ben's Phil Hartsfield Quake, and this was the first time that Ben had done an attempt at the aluminum um, sheath, and he really did well. We'll get to that. But just to, to speak about his Quaken, I'm going to show some good pictures of this. This is Ben's Quaken. It's 3V, which is just a, a great steel. This knife is as clean and as crisp as you could make one of these. Uh, Phil would be more than proud to see a piece that was done this well. It's a chisel ground piece. Uh, again, Ben's grinds are perfect. His edge is sensational. His handle wrap is tight, even, everything is done well. I knew Ben was going to knock it out of the park because of Ben's skill set. And Ben is a very skilled maker. Ben's making me another variant of this that there'll be another video on that I'm really jazzed about. Just a, a very cool, cool piece that we kind of combined thoughts on and came up with a, a, a Quaken with a, a bit more Sori, which is going to be very cool. Sori is Japanese curvature, well the term for the Japanese curvature. This knife, these knives, these Quakens, they really lend themselves to being carried, either cross draw, in waistband, behind the hip. I wear a suit almost every day and they blend in and they carry just wonderful. They also carry great in the field. Again, this is the ultimate utility knife of Quaken. I mean, the Japanese is a, an ancient blade culture that used knives for millennia. And not that all cultures didn't, but the Japanese really evolved it to an art. And the Quaken is such a useful, useful blade as a defense piece, as a utility knife. But the main reason it's so useful is the way you can carry them. I pushed everybody to do Hartsfield style sheaths. Ben's version. An aluminum wrapped in buffalo skin sheath turned out supreme. His is lined with a suede. It is awesome. He did a great tie down the side with the Segeo. The sheath is rigid, built like a, it's bulletproof. The knife fits exceptionally well. Just a little bit of pressure there. The knife goes in. The knife is ultimately secure. You can actually wear it as a neck knife, even though I would never wear something this big as a neck knife, because if it came out, you'd be giving yourself open heart surgery. But Ben, for his first shot, and he did the static lines at the bottom, for his first shot at a aluminum leather clad lined sheath, Ben knocked it out of the park. I mean, I hope Ben keeps offering these to his customers at an elevated price because there is so much more work to this than say a Kydex sheath or even a leather sheath. 
These truly are, the versatility of these blades truly is that they are carryable and they access like lightning. When you draw this blade, and it's rigged cross draw behind the hip, but you draw it, that static line pops. These blades are instant out. They're lightning fast. Just a dynamite way to carry these blades. The utility of these knives and the beauty of these knives just isn't in the edge geometry and the blade shape and the way the handles feel. It's the way the sheath is built and the way the sheath carries. When a sheath is strapped or, or, or worn through a loop, it does not free float in your waist. You can't just adjust it. It doesn't move with your body. You get in the car, if you've got it strapped to your waist, you're already it's sticking there. These, you can just, they, they, they just naturally move to a position by themselves. When you sit down, you can put a cross so you can access it sitting in a car. Just a fantastic thing. Fantastic style to carry a knife. Ben's handle, great, fits the hand, super tight wrappings. Ben Tendick, we're gonna show his info, how to get a hold of Ben. All I can tell you is that if you're a Japanese blade fan, Ben makes some fantastic work and I highly recommend it. The next piece is by Matt Gregory. Matt is a friend of mine. Matt not only is one of the most talented clean knife makers, when I say clean, I mean everything he does is done superb. It, it, he is such a clean maker. Every, he's so, he, he's very anal about every detail and it shows in his work. Matt's quaking again, really gorgeous. The blade, the grinds, beautiful, not a flaw, super sharp, great shape. A little different than Ben's. Um, Ben's and Matt's do resemble, they're a little bit, well I would say Matt's is more RJ Martin style Quaken, which has been a huge influence to Matt and rightfully so, RJ is the man, RJ's Quakens, which I did a video on, are phenomenal. Matt's is done with um, A2, the traditional Phil Hartsfield steel that Phil loved and loved the heat treat. Matt, if you don't have a piece from Matt, Matt's I don't want to say regular Quaken, but the style of Quaken that Matt excels at. Matt uses a lot of Kydex. Great, great sheath deployment. He has a very beautiful Quaken that he's kind of adapted in his own style. He was kind enough to come out and do one of these in the Phil style. Again, Matt Gregory, phenomenal knife. We get to the handle. Matt did something very cool here. He really gave us a tapered handle. Now you'll see it in the pictures a lot better. Now what that does is it still fits the hand. The big Turk stock gives you good purchase on it. But what's really nice about this, the way it carries, the handle's very small. When this is carried like that, under your suit coat or wherever, I mean this handle's gonna be in black, it's gonna blend in. Very, very concealable. Another important thing. Again, Matt's first attempt at an aluminum sheath and Matt knocked it out of the park. Uh, Matt's one of these guys that overthinks everything. So you know if you're getting a piece from Matt Gregory, it's going to be done very, very well. Matt's sheath, again, is superb. Done very well, easily. The knife slides in and out. It's a suede line sheath again. It's got the static line right at the bottom. Again, super secure. Very, very cool. You can wear it as a neck knife. Not that you wear a knife as big as a neck knife. But you, that's how good the, um, the fit is on the sheath. It really fits in beautiful. Very nice. Matt's making me a larger one that is double ground. These are chisel ground. Uh, I'm very excited to get this piece, but again, I'm gonna put Matt's info up at the end. Matt Gregory, if you're looking for any type of blade, but especially the Quakens, Matt does a knock-up, fantastic job. And even if you're not into the, the Hartsfield style, Matt's own style is very striking. Matt Gregory, awesome, awesome homage. Thank you, buddy. Last but not least, we have Adam Vigil. Adam did a, a great job. Adam probably made the closest looking to an actual Phil Hartsfield piece. Adam knew Phil well and visited Phil. So Adam had a good, good understanding of what Phil was doing. Adam's piece is very, very Phil-like. The blade is very similar to how Phil Hartsfield used to grind his blades. Handle wrap is excellent. Very tight, great size, great shape. 
He's got copper laying under the handle. You can see it through the wraps. It'll show in the pictures. He's got a, I, I believe it is a, 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 I believe it is a copper Manuki that's been patinaed. It's just gorgeous. Very, very, very cool quaking. He did his finish very similar to how Phil did his. It was a low grit fillet fish that is fantastic for a hard use knife because you can easily touch it up and it doesn't show marks at all practically. Adam Vigil, truly, truly a very, 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 feels very much like the late great Phil Hartsfield's Quaken. Knocked out of the park. He used ATS 34 and that's a steel that I, I, I'm used to the A2s because that's what Phil always used. I'm very interested in this because the A2 Quakens were very susceptible to rusting. If you contaminated the sheath, a lined aluminum sheath is very, they're not one you want to contaminate, you wreck the sheath. Adam's sheath it kind of set me back at first. It's done excellently, it's an aluminum sheath, but it is not lined. It doesn't seem to mar the blade at all though. And instead of being leather wrapped, Adam has put a basically a, a, a durable rubber coating on the outside of it. Now what this does is this sheath basically, and being that it's ATS 34 being stainless, this knife would not be near, nearly susceptible to rust as the others would be. Um, this would make a definite, like awesome, hard use style Quaken. Uh, one that you wouldn't have to be afraid of getting wet or actually using an adverse, you know, an adverse climate. This, of all the Quaken sent to me, even though I was set back at first by the rubber covered um, aluminum sheath, and even though he's textured the rubber to give it a leather look, at first, I, I, when, I, when, he, when he told me that's what it was, I, I didn't know what to think. I, I'm so into the leather lined aluminum sheaths. But when this came, and I don't know if I'd want it for every day, but for the days that um, I'd be taking my Quaking into, into wet or, or using it actually in the hunting woods as a utility knife. And just, you know, any type of fishing or just general hard knock around use, Adam's interpretation of the Hartsfield sheath is kind of ingenious and I'm really digging it. Knock up job, Adam. Again, just a, a really, really great fit. Again, with this superb fit, I mean, it's really in there. It's not coming out. Again, you could wear it as a big neck knife. But when it's on your belt, it's a static line, draws quick and smooth. Just a superb rendition of the Phil Hartsfield Quaken. So basically that's it guys. I want to take, take the time to thank everybody from the Blade Form thread that contributed, all the makers that made knives. I wish you'd all send me your Phil Hartsfield inspired Quakens to play with. These are truly, in my mind, the ultimate utility piece. I'm going to post up all the information at the end on these three very talented makers. Not only will they make you a Quaken in the Hartsfield style, they'll make it for you in their own style, which is very cool. Um, thank you guys for showing Phil that kind of respect. Thank you guys for participating in this. Um, none of these knives are going back to their makers. I'm going to purchase all these knives. Uh, they're that good. I love them. Um, they're great knives. I'm honored to own them and I'm honored to um, have started that thread and that has gotten such a great response and such a, as some people said, a, a good, a good, a good, just happy feeling type thread. It's been really cool. So again, Phil Hartsfield, Matt Gregory, Adam Vigil, Ben Tendick, awesome makers. Thank you all for, for contributing and I appreciate it.